Hey, you're looking at algorithms now, an incredibly important topic. Let's first of all then define what an algorithm is. So it's a sequence of instructions that perform a specific task when followed. So it does, it does something very specific, it performs a very specific task, and the instructions are what, when you follow them, when you execute them, they lead you to perform that task, which is very powerful because a computer can only really follow instructions, it can't do anything by itself. So if you write an algorithm for a computer to follow, then you're going to reach, it's going to perform the task the algorithm is designed to do. So this is a flowchart example of an algorithm. This is to find the roots of a quadratic equation, to basically solve a quadratic equation. And you can see it's very complicated relative to what we're used to. You could probably solve a quadratic equation quite easily without going through this algorithm, but a computer can't, of course. It's got to go through very set instructions to get there, very precise instructions. So, leading nicely on, an algorithm should be precise, i.e. unambiguous, very clear. The instructions should be very obvious and easy to follow. It should be well defined, which means you have very clear input and outputs. So it tells you the inputs here and it has a couple of outputs or three outputs, depending on what happens, what the situation is. So it's very well defined in that regard. And also finite, it's important to be finite. It's got to, it can't have an infinite loop, it's got to end eventually. So a clear distinction before we move forward is that a computer program is not an algorithm, it's an implementation of an algorithm. Algorithms are very abstract, they're not implementations, they're not related to any particular system. This algorithm isn't designed necessarily for a human or a computer, it's, it's just an algorithm, it's not related to anything. But you can of course implement this in Java, in Python or have a human do it if you <laughs> wrote instructions on how to do this. So algorithms are totally independent of any system. You're never looking at an algorithm specifically to do with one system. So you're not going to say, okay, this algorithm is going to take a minute to run on this computer, because you're only ever looking at it in a general sense. So algorithms are general solutions to problems. And a computer program can implement an algorithm. You can have a program that is based on a abstract algorithm, but they're not the same thing. So that's a clear distinction early on. The two main mediums to display algorithms, apart from just written descriptions, are pseudocode and flowcharts. So let's break down what these are first of all. So pseudocode is just an informal description. So it's very informal, that's the keyword of those two. So it's intended for human reading, but it looks like program code. So pseudocode uh, looks like code, but it has no actual syntax. It doesn't actually matter. So in the exam, the pseudocode, an exam board shows you, you don't have to write pseudocode in the same way. The syntax of that pseudocode isn't correct. There's no correct syntax for pseudocode. It's never actually going to get executed by computers, it's only designed for humans to read and then potentially convert to code at a later time. So this is an example of pseudocode, it doesn't matter that I've capitalised it, as long as you're consistent, so don't capitalise if here and not here, you want to keep things consistent, but it actually doesn't matter. You want to make it look like program code, but it doesn't, the complexities that come in through program code you can exclude of pseudocode, so for example for loops can be quite complicated in program code, you have certain conditions, you can just say repeat five times in pseudocode to make it more simple. You'll know what flowcharts are, but there are three main symbols you should use if you ever write a flowchart. You have a start and end symbol, which you just write start and end. As I say, you have to be very well defined, so this is a nice way to define your algorithms. You then have processes, and usually you'll do a little description of what a process is within the box. And then you have decisions to be made, and usually these are binary decisions, so either true or false, one or zero, but you may be able to add other conditions too if you have multiple cases. Linear search is the first algorithm we're going to look at, and searching algorithms as a category are there to, um, you have an item and you want to find whether it's in a list or not, relatively self-expansion, and often they'll return sort of a position within the list as well, so position 5 or position 10. And linear search is the most obvious way to do it, there are quite a few ways to do it, and so lots of algorithms to do it as well. Linear search is just the most obvious, and this is literally where you go through the list and you check every element to see if it matches your target, so if you have the item you want and it repeats this comparison with each element until you actually find your element and then it will return it or if you check the whole list and no matches have been found. So really simple, it's just checking uh, everything, it's a brute force algorithm. So you've got a list and you've got a target in it, in this case it's in the last position, it doesn't actually matter, and you've got a function to find the length. So. Um, this is pseudocode. This is the only algorithm I'm actually going to show you pseudocode for because it's the simplest. But even so, this is quite daunting pseudocode potentially. So basically, it just repeats until you found it. So found is just a tracker variable that's a boolean. Or if you 
reach the end of a list by your current index being greater than the last index on the list, which is the length minus one. And so you, you just match each position to your target. And if it is a match, then it returns true and it will actually return the kind of index that it's currently looking at. Uh, otherwise, it will just increment the index until you get to the end. So very simple, most obvious way to do it, but this isn't very efficient because you have to check literally every item potentially in the worst case. And we always talk about the worst case when we're analyzing algorithms, at least at the start. So a uh, very simple linear search. Binary search is a slightly more complicated but much more efficient searching algorithm. And what this does, as you can guess with the name, it continually divides a list by two, hence the binary, eliminating the part of a list that cannot have your item in it. Well, why can't it have your item in it? Because the list is fully ordered first to eliminate with any certainty. So we'll, we'll talk about some, order, uh, some sorting algorithms a bit later, but you need for binary search to work to have a fully ordered list. With linear search, the list will be unordered. Um, in fact, if it's unordered, sort of linear search is your only option. You have to check every item potentially. Whereas with binary search, if it's ordered, you can eliminate halves. And this is sort of the whole idea is to simplify uh, the set. Whereas linear search, as I said, is just brute force checking everything. So it's, that may not make sense. So let's actually do some examples. So we've got this list here and we want to find six. Six is our target element. And you can see this is sorted. So we can use binary search on it. First of all, what binary search does is divide the list in two. So we need to find a midpoint. So in this case, 15 is the midpoint. It's quite a nice list. It's got four on each side. So 15 is our midpoint. And what we do, we compare our target element to our midpoint. And 6 is less than 15. So we can automatically get rid of 15 and the other side. We know that it's ordered, so this side cannot have an item in it because all of these are going to be much larger than, or just larger than 6. So we've, we've automatically sort of got rid of half of our list, which is perfect. So we've already, you know, got rid of most of it. And we then repeat this process. So we choose a new midpoint, and let's choose 5 as our midpoint, just so we don't get 6 straight away. So this will be an implementational detail where you say if it's an, an even number list, the midpoint will be left of center, perhaps. So 5 is our midpoint. 5 is less than 6, so we can also get rid of 5 and whatever's left to, f to the left of 5, which is just 3 in this case. So again, halving our list. We then do the same thing again, left of, left of center is actually now 6, so our midpoint is our target. So we've found our target and we can return for position and also true because we found it. So I said that binary search was much more efficient for linear search and this is a graph you may not have seen something like before. So this is a graph of worst time, so worst case time. As I said, we always sort of talk about the worst case, um, so where it has to check every item essentially in this case. But this might be easier to think of as the number of comparisons it has to make. Linear search has to make, in the worst case, a comparison with every item in the list. With binary search, doesn't this is actually a a log graph which you may not have come across don't worry about it uh, with algorithms you analyze them mathematically which is above this level you might do it at a level or certainly at university but we don't have to worry about it too much the idea is that as you can see as the size which is always labeled with n grows linear search grows linearly <laughs> as you would suggest with just it's just an n uh, line graph and so directly proportional it grows linearly so you uh, have a very um, it's very expected with binary search, it performs very well the larger your input is because with a log graph, it, um, as you increase the input, each time the y-axis will not increase by the same amount essentially. So, Because if you think about it, if you have say a input of a million, so your n is a million, binary search can eliminate uh, 500,000 straight away just by its uh, its process. Whereas linear search has to check every single element, which is why it's got this straight line graph. And um, you know this which doesn't make sense. As I say, algorithms are abstract; they're analyzed mathematically. This is just a model, so this isn't a literal uh, performance graph, but it works as a generalization. However, the main thing you need to realize is that binary search has to be sorted first. So this is an extra step, an extra complication. If you choose an inefficient sorting algorithm first, it might nullify the effect of binary search. So that's a really, really important caveat that binary search has to be ordered, whereas linear search doesn't have to be ordered. Linear search is your sort of only option if you're not going to bother to sort it first.